Hello, my name is Sarah Brazel, and I'm a program officer in the National Center for Special Education Research at the Institute of Education Sciences. I am over the reading, writing, and language development portfolio in our standard research grant program. I'm excited to introduce one of our NICSER funded researchers, Dr. Jeannie Wanzek from Vanderbilt University, who led a study of the efficacy of a reading intervention called Voyager Passport to Literacy and an intensified version of the program for students with severe reading difficulties. After Dr. Wanzek's presentation, I will be moderating a question and answer session. I will take questions from the chat space, so please type your questions in the chat space as you are listening. Dr. Wanzek will place in the chat a link to download some lesson resources on upper elementary interventions available through the Meadows Center, one of her partners in this reading work. I would like to provide a brief introduction to Dr. Jeannie Wanzek for those of you who do not know her work. Dr. Wanzek is a professor in the Department of Special Education and the Curry Ingram Endowed Chair at Peabody College of Vanderbilt University. She has conducted research for over 20 years, including research examining effective reading instruction and intervention for students with reading difficulties and disabilities. Prior to receiving her doctorate, she worked as a special educator and as an elementary teacher. Dr. Wanzek has directed several federally funded randomized control trials funded by IES and the National Institute of Health, partnering with school districts in various states. As part of this research, Dr. Wanzek has developed reading interventions for students with reading difficulties and disabilities across grades K to 12. She has over 100 publications in the area of early reading, learning disability, and adolescent reading intervention. She has worked with several elementary and secondary schools conducting research to improve core classroom instruction and reading intervention implementation. In addition, she has consulted with several schools and districts across the country on the implementation of effective reading instruction. The title of today's session is Reading Intervention for Upper Elementary Students with Reading Difficulties. The session has already been recorded, so Dr. Wanzek and I will be reviewing the chat now as you are listening to the recording played live. At the conclusion of the presentation, I will be facilitating the question and answer session with Dr. Wanzek. I now turn the time over to our presenter, Dr. Jeannie Wanzek. Hi, I'm Jeannie Wanzek from Vanderbilt University and I'm presenting today on reading interventions for upper elementary students with reading difficulties. Um, although I'm presenting this and I'm going to present several studies that we've done with upper elementary students with reading difficulties and disabilities, there are several people all listed here who um, have been a part of this work and an important part of this work as well, and from many different universities too. This work has been funded from the Institute of Education Sciences, as well as the National Institutes of Health. Um, as I said, I'm gonna present three different studies funded from those different entities. So a little bit of background. We know that many students enter fourth grade still struggling significantly with reading. 64% uh, of students in the US in fourth grade can't read at proficient levels. 70% of students with disabilities don't even achieve basic levels of reading by fourth grade. And it's particularly um, dire for those students who are in those lowest percentiles. So those students with reading difficulties and those students with reading disabilities in the 25th and 10th percentile areas, uh, their reading achievement has actually dropped over the past several years. We do have research on upper elementary reading interventions, but it's not as uh, not as much of it as we do in the early elementary grades, the sort of learning to read grades. Um, but we see small effects, not as large as early elementary, but certainly small effects for these supplemental intensive explicit interventions on both foundational reading outcomes and comprehension outcomes. We see many students who need multi-component interventions in these upper elementary grades. Those tend to show some higher effects, probably because by the time students are in fourth or fifth grade, um, they may have multiple areas of difficulty in reading. So I'm gonna talk about study one, which is more of a less intensive tier two study focused on foundational skills. The intervention we used had an emphasis on reading comprehension and included uh, reading literary and informational text. 
as well as a follow-up study that was a more intensive version of that same intervention. And then a separate study that was also an intensive study, but added the mindset intervention, uh, used a different intervention that had more of an emphasis on foundational skills, but applying those to reading and reading comprehension as well. So I'll start with study one, the less intensive study. The purpose of this study was to examine the effects of standard kind of a tier two uh, implementation. The intervention was Passport and for fourth grade students with reading comprehension difficulties. We were looking at the effects of that intervention as well as any differences in effects based on their reading ability or English language level. We had 451 fourth grade students who were below the 30th percentile in reading comprehension, and these came from several different states, districts, and schools. The participants uh, were largely from high need schools, a large population of free and reduced lunch qualification, a fairly diverse um, set of participants, and about 15% uh, with an identified disability and 13% identified as English language learners. These 451 fourth grade students who had the reading comprehension difficulties were then randomly assigned to either the passport intervention, which as I said is a multi-component intervention I'll describe in a second, or to the typical score of services that were occurring, so interventions that were occurring there. And I'll show you a little bit of a comparison there. They attended intervention 30 minutes each day in groups of four to seven students throughout the school year um, with a mean of about 94 sessions of supplemental intervention. It was a standard implementation of the passport intervention. This included basic word reading skills, irregular words, spelling, um, and then progressing to more advanced word study with affixes and roots and strategies for multisyllabic word reading. A uh, significant portion of the time was also spent on vocabulary and comprehension strategies, reading a text each day, focusing on learning um, about identifying main ideas, summarizing the text, questioning, um, typical com reading comprehension strategies. And they were progress monitored each week. You can see a comparison here between students who were randomly assigned to the treatment and those who were randomly assigned to continue getting what the school was already providing. Both interventions were around 30 minutes, and this is the actual implementation um, through observations. Um, both had more of a focus on reading comprehension. Um, there was a little bit more vocabulary in the uh, treatment group, but otherwise um, somewhat similar in terms of how, or in terms of the components of reading that were addressed. These are what the students were then measured on before the intervention and then at the end of the year after the intervention. Uh, we looked at word reading with two different measures. Uh, that's the Woodcock Johnson 3. Uh, we looked at vocabulary in both the Woodcock Johnson and the Gates and reading comprehension with the Gates McKinney and the Woodcock Johnson reading comprehension as well. Uh, for those of you who are interested, we did a partially nested um, random controlled trial. So students were nested within school and those in the treatment were nested within a small group for the intervention. And then we also looked at moderators of whether they differed in their effects by their initial reading ability uh, or their English language learner status. This is an overview of their scores at pretest and post-test on each of the measures. These are standard scores uh, where 100 would be the, the mean and the expected sort of average. Um, and as the standard scores stay the same from pretest to post-test, that would indicate they made the expected amount of gain. So we expect those to stay the same. If they're falling further behind, the scores will go down. If they're accelerating the learning, their scores will go up. Uh, these are averages, obviously, across the full sample for both the treatment and the comparison. You can see we identified students based on reading comprehension, so their reading comprehension is almost a full standard deviation below what would be on track. Um, but their word reading, um, on average, is um, close to being on track. We, of course, had that being an average. We, of course, had several students uh, who had lower word reading, which is one of the reasons we looked at that um, 
to see if there were differences in effects for kids who came in with lower versus higher word reading scores. What we found at the end of the intervention is that students in this less intensive 30 minute standard treatment um, significantly outperformed students in the business as usual in reading comprehension, about a third of a standard deviation acceleration over the school intervention that was being provided. But they both performed similarly on word reading outcomes and vocabulary outcomes. So the acceleration occurred in the reading comprehension that was an emphasis of the program. When we looked at differences uh, among the students, there were no differences in those effects by their initial comprehension or fluency abilities, um, as well as students with uh, who were English language learners or not English language learners performed similarly. So the intervention had similar benefits regardless of their English language learner status. We did, however, find that students with higher initial word reading, so those who came in with those higher levels of word reading, had higher effects in the treatment on reading comprehension. So they benefited more from the passport multi-component treatment uh, than students who came in with lower levels of word reading. Students in the treatment there, therefore, were able to accelerate their learning and reading comprehension. Uh, it was equally beneficial for English language learners and non-English language learners and of varying comprehension and fluency levels. But we do see this word recognition or did see this word recognition uh, difference in this study. And that may mean that those students require intervention that incorporates more word study instruction. Um, this particular intervention was had a heavier component of word study in the first six weeks, but then that tapered off to a very small part of the 30 minute intervention. So that led us to looking at a more intensive intervention. We used the same intervention, but intensified it in several ways. The purpose of this study was to examine the effects of the more intensive or tier three implementation of the passport intervention for students with more severe reading comprehension difficulties. So again, we looked at the effects of the intensive versus the typical school services for these same students and any differential effects for reading ability or for English language level. The participants in the study were 306 fourth grade students below the 15th percentile in reading comprehension, so uh, more severe reading difficulties, again, across several states, districts, and schools. Pretty similar participants from high need schools um, and a diverse sample, uh, both in ethnicity and race. A uh, few more English language learners in the sample, 22%. They were randomly assigned again to the intensive passport or the typical school services. One way that this intervention uh, was more intense was that they attended the intervention for 45 minutes each day and we added some components or passports uh, intensive implementation has some added components which I'll share. In addition it was more intense in the sense that they were in smaller groups. Uh, they were all in groups of instructional groups of two to four students and uh, it was again for the full school year. So the mean for this group was about 98 sessions that they received. So the more intensive implementation has the word works and read to understand the same as study one, but an extra practice with daily fluency and additional decoding or a writing to read activity that connected to their text or their comprehension work. Again, progress monitoring occurred each week. You can see the instructional comparison again. Uh, even the school comparison with these students, they um, also were providing them more um, more than 30 minutes. There was about an average of 37. Ours was an average of 44 minutes um, through these observations. Uh, the difference here, though, is with these students below the 15th percentile, the school interventions had about equal time on reading comprehension and decoding or word reading, whereas the passport intervention continued the emphasis on the reading comprehension time, at least in terms of time within the intervention. Uh, we looked at word reading as well as word reading efficiency or fluency and then the reading comprehension. So again, you can see the um, scores here. Uh, again, they're standard scores for each of the different measures. 
Um, this group was uh, below the 15th percentile, so more than a full standard deviation below in passage comprehension on average. And you can see their word reading is a little bit lower than the sample that we had for study one, but their word reading efficiency is uh, quite behind, uh, uh, not quite two standard deviations below, but significantly below one standard deviation. So uh, again, as we're looking at the post-test there, if they are maintaining the same standard score, then they've made the typical amount of growth um, that would be expected. If they are, if they have a higher score there, they're able to accelerate. So that's what we're looking for is acceleration of particular areas and certainly not dropping. When we look at the sample as a whole in this study, so it, the effects of this intervention, this more intensive intervention, sh showed that students who received the intensive implementation of the passport significantly outperformed the students in the typical school services in word reading and in word reading efficiency, about a quarter of a standard deviation, uh, about a fifth of a standard deviation on the efficiency. But that was not enough to accelerate their learning over the typical school services on reading comprehension like we saw in study one. Uh, so at least not after one year of intervention. Um, they may need to improve those scores even more before we would see the reading comprehension also accelerate. Uh, there were no differences for this group in the effects based on their initial reading ability. Uh, it is a fairly restricted sample, all of them below the 15th percentile in reading comprehension. And there are again no differences similar to study one in effects for English language learners versus non-English language learners. So the treatment was beneficial. We saw a similar amount of acceleration from both types of students. So in, in summary of the of this study two. In summary of this study too, the intensive multi-component intervention helped students read more words and read them more efficiently, efficiently, excuse me, but did not accelerate their learning in reading comprehension. So the passport intervention, the standard implementation in study one helped students improve their reading comprehension, but more so for students who had higher word reading abilities. And while it was equally beneficial for English language learners and non-English language learners, we also see that um, students who have these lower word reading scores may need um, additional intensive intervention in that area. So study three, the final study I'm going to talk about today for these upper elementary students, added a mind in, mindset intervention to reading intervention. This study uh, used a different reading intervention as well, so I'll also describe that. Mindset refers to attitudes, beliefs um, that you have about learning that are associated with how you achieve successful academic outcomes. So a fixed mindset is a belief that you have an innate abilities in this area. So you have this finite ability in math or in reading and you that doesn't change. A growth mindset uh, is a belief that intelligence grows when a person works through challenges. So as they work through things, as they're learning, they can become better at math or reading or other types of areas. And several studies have noted correlational relationships between having a growth mindset and having better academic tasks. And it also appears to be malleable that initial, some initial intervention work has shown, uh, mostly with older students, that some there's some success in teaching a growth mindset and that that might also then improve your academic outcomes. So in this study, we were examining the effects of providing both a reading intervention as well as a mindset intervention for these fourth grade students with reading difficulties and looking at the effects of having both of those versus just having a reading intervention versus, again, the typical school services. And if there were any characteristics that we um, measured that would explain student response to intervention. The participants here were 361 fourth grade students. They were below the 30th percentile on a word reading fluency composite. Uh, the composite was both sight word reading and phonemic decoding, um, which is the nonsense words to look at how they use decoding to attack words. And 
uh, so that's different than study one and study two, where it was students specifically with reading comprehension difficulties. Um, again, though, we were in several different states, districts, and schools. Uh, again, a pretty diverse sample, um, about 14% English language learner, high need schools, 74% free and reduced lunch, and about 14% of the students already had an identified disability. The students were randomly assigned to get the reading intervention plus, which was also getting a mindset intervention to get just the reading intervention or to the typical school services. We use the Linda Mood phoneme sequencing program. It has an emphasis on word foundational skills, word reading and decoding, which was the area that the sample um, was selected on. Uh, but also, as I mentioned before, applying that to text reading and reading comprehension. And for the students who received the Reading Intervention Plus, at a different time during the day, they also completed the Brainology Mindset Intervention, which works on uh, teaching students about growth mindset and about their brain in a global sense. So it's not specific to reading, but just growth mindset in general. The students attended the Reading Intervention 45 minutes every day in instructional groups of three to five students. There was a mean of 74 uh, sessions that they completed over the um, school year between the pretest and the post-test. For the students who also got the mindset intervention, they attended that 30 minutes two times a week in groups of four to seven students. There's an online aspect to the brainology and then a teacher directed part as well. Uh, and there's a total of 24 sessions in the brainology and every student completed all of those. In terms of the reading intervention, the reading treatments had a mean in, in actual implementation of 43 minutes uh, each day. School comparison of those similar students were 35 minutes a day. And we see a heavier emphasis on the decoding and word reading and phonological awareness in our reading treatments. That was the emphasis of the intervention. Whereas the emphasis in the school comparison uh, was a little bit higher in reading comprehension, similar to what we saw um, in the previous two studies. Assessments, we looked at quite a few things, decoding, word reading, uh, phonological processing, reading fluency, reading comprehension, of course, also their mindset, the extent to which that changed, and to help us with some of the characteristics that might determine differences in response to intervention, we also had teachers rate the student's problem behavior. The effects of the intervention showed that students in reading intervention, so either of the groups who received the treatment uh, for reading intervention, improved significantly more than the typical school services in both decoding and phonological processing. Those again being the focus of uh, this particular intervention, a little more than a quarter of a standard deviation acceleration there. We did see um, small effect sizes in both um, well, in reading comprehension in particular, about the same as we saw in study two uh, that I just talked about. However, in this study with uh, the sample and the standard deviations, that was not statistically significant. Students who were in the reading intervention plus mindset also improved more than the typical school, school services in decoding, a little bit higher, um, but uh, nothing too different there, about a third of a standard deviation. And again, we saw that small bump in reading comprehension for those students too, but not statistically significant. Um, when we looked at whether there were any differences based on the initial reading achievement that students came in with, differences in comprehension, differences in word reading, differences in fluency, there were no, that did not explain response to intervention. There were no differences in the effects. Same thing, whether they came in with a fixed, more fixed or more growth mindset, there were no differences in the effects of the intervention. And same thing for behavior. So we did not find a particular characteristic that explained uh, differences in response to intervention. And there were no differences uh, between the reading intervention produced the effects. There were no differences between the students who also received the mindset intervention versus those who received only the reading intervention.
So overall, we see small effects, quarter of our standard deviation were noted in decoding, phonological processing, and reading comprehension for receiving the reading intervention at the, for these upper elementary students over the typical uh, school services. But adding mindset intervention to the reading intervention uh, did not significantly improve outcomes. And the trends, we did see trends across the groups for more of a growth mindset, um, but these were similar across groups. So whether it was the school intervention, the reading only, or the reading plus mindset, um, so it may have been developmental growth in growth mindset, uh, may be related to just receiving reading intervention, because of course all the students received uh, some level of reading intervention, but the particular mindset intervention did not seem to accelerate that. Across these three studies, um, we have some limitations and implications for uh, and future research really for students uh, in these upper elementary grades who have reading difficulties. Uh, one thing to point out, these were all efficacy studies. So they were research interventionists who, they were teachers, but they were hired um, as part of the research team um, to administer the intervention and trained in that way. Uh, we don't have any information on the level of fidelity for the school delivered interventions in the sense that uh, if they had a particular program, did they implement the program they were using in the way it was intended? We don't have that sort of fidelity information, but we obviously, as I shared, have the observations of, of what they taught. Um, I think an important takeaway is the need for students with these more severe reading difficulties uh, may need to be placed immediately into more intensive interventions, which is somewhat different than how we think of early elementary response to intervention. And it's clear that uh, both from previous research as well as these three studies that they may need even further intensity in one or more reading elements. Um, it can be hard in a 30 or 45 minute time to adequately address all of the students' needs, um, especially students with more severe reading difficulties, but uh, we need to find ways um, to do that. And a more intensive intervention in terms of the, the mindset work that we did in study three may require actually embedding that mindset within the reading intervention or addressing specifically a reading mindset for these students with reading difficulties rather than a more global look at, oh, you can change your intelligence. Um, these students are particularly frustrated, um, some of them, and certainly having particular difficulties with reading specifically. So they may um, think about that mindset and their ability to grow in reading differently and approaching that or embedding it within their reading intervention uh, might have better outcomes for those students, but that's certainly an area for further research. Thank you.